Hey everybody, it's about quarter after seven this morning. Got most of camp packed up. I keep my tarp up because there's a little bit of a drizzle. Not enough to call it rain. This morning, I, I still think this is probably going to be my last day. But so far, my knees haven't hurt too much just walking around camp. But they didn't really all that much yesterday. We'll see what happens when it comes to uh, actually hiking with a pack on. Um, I'm just enjoying breakfast and chunks of bagel with Lara Bar on it. I decided to skip my hot part of my breakfast this morning just because I didn't feel like it. Yeah, good morning. Bags on, finishing pack, getting packed, and uh, let's see what this morning brings us. Today's plan is to get to Paseco for my resupply and see what happens after that. The last thing that I want to do is quit. I will if I feel like I have to. I feel like I want to quit, but whether I need to quit I'm not certain. I'm thinking that this pain may go away. It may stay the whole time, but I want to accomplish this. And sometimes things just get hard and painful. Sometimes that pain tells us to stop and sometimes we need to keep fighting through it. Sometimes like right now, it's hard to tell which one I should do. So all I can do is one step at a time. Right now, I have no choice. I have to go to Paseco. It's about four miles there. Uh, part of why this seemed like it was a good time to quit, if any, is it's early on and uh, tomorrow I have a way to get home. So how I'm feeling is there is a possibility this trip will continue today, but I can't think past this morning. And this morning is let's get to proceed. And let's get hiking. quarter after eight. So far so good. Knees are holding up. I'm trying to keep my uh, pace a little slower than it has been just to not overdo it. I believe that the ibuprofen is helping and you know the end of the day yesterday it would have been wearing off and I didn't take any midday so I think that'll help as well with just alleviating some of that ache and soreness. I'm feeling optimistic right now. I think we can do this. It's amazing how fickle my brain can be. <laughs> It appears that the dew has revealed all of the spider's secret spots. So we've arrived at Priest's Vly, beautiful clearing. And that swamp goes through all the way over to there and there's a lake over at that end, I believe. Probably all swamp like this. That's probably what a Vly is and I don't know any better, so. <laughs> <sighs> so it's about 9.30. You can see off in the distance there. I don't know if you can see it. It looks really bright, but over there is a dead Vly. Now, I am about to cross the footbridge over the stream that goes out of Henderson Lake. Pretty little footbridge with some cool rocks around it. Here, I'll show you. Check it out. Pretty neat, eh? That means we have about a mile and a quarter left to Paseco. I was just looking at my map and I realized I said something that we went by something like Henderson Lake or something that last footbridge, Buckhorn Lake. I don't know where the heck I got that other name from, but we went by Buckhorn Lake. <laughs> it appears that the beavers have been messing with the old trail here, so now the trail goes this way. I've made it to the register at Paseco. I made it. <laughs> And it is uh, about like 9.45, almost 10 o'clock. Um, I'm going to sign in as if I am continuing. But man, I am hurting. Well, let's just sign in. All right. A little bit farther before we actually get to the road and where I'm going to meet up for my resupply. All right. So I've made it to where the trail's coming out here and the Seco and... I got my, my resupply crew, my parents and my grandparents here, and 
Um, gonna at least walk the road here in Paseco to the post office, check my mail, stuff like that. Based on how I'm feeling there, I'll decide whether I keep going. But yeah, we'll uh, see how it goes. So we're uh, hiking our way uh, down the road here in Paseco. Uh, making our way over to the post office right now. I got Grandpa with me. Say hi, everybody, Grandpa. Hi, everybody. <laughs> got Mom and Dad up there in the front, leading the way. And uh, I'm waving to myself. Yeah. <laughs> you do. It's funny when I'm uh, in the woods talking to this. I feel like a crazy person <laughs> just talking to myself. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Yeah, but I... <laughs> sucky, sucky, I have to go. <laughs> the couch in the back. <laughs> so we're going to have a little picnic here at the uh, trail register at the other end of Paseco, but uh, they welcome hikers and they've got a little hatchet throwing spot over there so it's pretty neat oh yeah that's a tomahawk <laughs> uh -huh. want to take a throw oh uh, i've never done it all right i'll do one you you, you video record oh. okay i got that <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Got in the ground. <laughs> so I'm taking one last break with the crew up here at the airport here in Paseco. Man, it turned out into a beautiful day today. Um, It'd be the kind of day I'd want to be hiking if my legs weren't feeling this way. But um, we are going to make it back to Mayfield uh, and I will rest up, wash up, get everything fresh for tomorrow and hopefully uh, I'm able to hit the trail again in the morning. Hey everybody. So uh, I decided not to come back on the trail. Uh, I've I got a number of reasons and I, I figured I'd wrap this video up by doing a bit of a a recap of the, my experience of this Northville Placid Trail trip. Um, it was harder than I expected. The trail was actually not more difficult than I expected the trail itself, but uh, there were things that I wasn't ready for, things I didn't expect, some things I did expect, um, but I figured I'd just talk through a couple of those things. Um, the first one, that first night on Monday, uh, when it rained so hard, uh, I expected my gear to keep that rain out, um, but that there was so much rain that even my gear couldn't keep it out. Uh, and the trick that I learned is put your stuff, the stuff that's inside your bag, put that inside of a trash bag. That gives it an extra layer. So I did that for the rest of the trip. Of course, I didn't have that much rain, but that would have been a nice deal. You know, that would have kept me a lot safer on that first night with all that water because I wouldn't have to deal with a wet sleeping bag. It would have kept that stuff dry. And really seems like, especially on a long trail like this, dryness is even more of a priority than I realized. Um, I, so there's the dryness of your gear to keep you warm at night, but also dryness of your socks. You saw that bit where I was wringing out my sock and I was nasty, but um, <clears throat> I brought one extra pair of socks on the trip when in reality I think I needed like two or three, at least three extra pair of socks because uh, what happened is on the, on day three, 
uh, I was wearing socks that were damp from day two. Uh, I had an extra pair of socks in my bag I could have worn, but I thought, you know, I'll let the, the pair that I'm wearing last another day and then I'll put the fresh pair on tomorrow so I can try to stretch them out. Bad idea. Did not work well. I got blisters all over my feet from having that moisture and as soon as your feet are wet, it causes your skin to be loose and it makes those blisters happen. So dry socks and bring more socks than you think, like, think you need. Uh, because um, it would probably be better to change your socks in the middle of the day than continue a day with wet socks and take them off at the end of the day. Because it seems like wet socks equal blisters, blisters equal pain in your feet that won't go away and that more hiking won't make better. So blisters are a serious issue, wetness is an issue, and I, I learned to be even more aware of wetness. I'm used to two, three night trips where you know, if you suffer a little bit by the end of it, you're fine, you just go home at the end of it. But with a trip like this, that's not an option. You need to be able to keep going. So the I was not prepared to take the precautionary measures necessary to keep going uh, by keeping my gear dry. Um, the next thing, so that, that wetness is one issue. And then the other thing that I learned is... Um, what a real backup plan is. Not just a backup plan like, yeah, in case of emergency, call this number, but if I get three days into the trip and something goes wrong, what is my egress plan? How do I get out of the woods? How am I intending to get out of the woods at each point along the way? Um, how can I get picked up? How can I get home? How can I contact family and friends? Um, I didn't have a great egress plan because I had no intention of leaving those woods unless I got seriously injured. Um, so the fact that I left for less serious reasons, more preventative reasons, I didn't always have an egress plan. It worked out, God provided for me, and I am so grateful. But in the future, it'll be smart for me to have an egress plan for things like that. Um, and also a, a, a mental <laughs> egress plan. Um, not just having a ride or having somebody to call, but um, being mentally prepared to not continue and have that not be the end of the world. It's better to be safe than to have pushed through and caused permanent damage to your body. Um, try again another time.